Rachel Maddow often said during the Trump presidency, watch what they do, not what they say. As Trump makes another run for the White House, I'd like to amend Rachel's insightful admonition. Listen to what Trump says, because that's exactly what he will do if he wins the presidency again in 2024. With his threats just this past week on everyone from prosecutors and judges to the media and military leaders, Trump continues to promise a presidency bent on retribution and is gaining support among Republicans for his malevolent vision by the day. This is the nightmare for American democracy President Biden warned about in an important speech on Thursday in Arizona. Power, concentrating power, attempting to abuse power, purging and packing key institutions, spewing conspiracy theories, spreading lies for profit and power to divide America in every way, inciting violence against those who risk their lives to keep America safe, weaponizing against the very soul of who we are as Americans. This MAGA threat is a threat to the brick and mortar of our democratic institutions, but it's also a threat to the character of our nation. Joining me now, Brian Kloss, Associate Professor of Global Politics at University College London, contributing writer at The Atlantic and author of The Despot's Apprentice. Miles Taylor, former Department of Homeland Security Chief of Staff, co-founder and senior advisor of Forward and author of Blowback, A Warning to Save Democracy from the Next Trump. And Molly Jong Fast, special correspondent at Vanity Fair and host of the Fast Politics Podcast. Thank you all very much for coming to the Sunday show for what I hope will be a, a, an incredible conversation. Um, the amount of threats that we've seen from, from Donald Trump this past week are like breathtaking, even for him, from the threat to General Milley, uh, now the former Joint Chief, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, to threats against American media with a specific social media post focused on uh, the owner of this network, Comcast, and then his continual, continual threats against the prosecutors and judges in the various cases against him in the four jurisdictions where his 91, where his 91 counts sit. Uh, Brian, let me start with you. Talk about this moment we're in with the leading candidate for the Republican nomination making really incredible anti-small-D Democratic threats. Well, it's the, it's the biggest story of the 2024 election, but it's not being treated as that in, in the press. And I think that's a, a real failing, because it has become the banality of crazy incitement to violence, the sort of normalcy and routine of Trump saying things that could get people killed. And you have him, you know, suggesting that you could execute America's top general. On Friday night, he joked about Paul Pelosi being attacked, and the crowd laughed when he was refer referencing, uh, a, you know, sort of an 82-year-old man being hit over the head with a hammer. Uh, he called to execute people who shoplift um, from stores, a very minor crime, I mean, one to take seriously, but obviously not one worthy of execution. Um, and also, he has, uh, you know, demonized a variety of people in, in his various outlets on Truth Social and in his discussions in front of crowds. And this is related to a term called stochastic terrorism. It's an academic jargon term. But what it basically means is that when someone who's very powerful and influential targets or demonizes individual groups in the public, at least a small number of their followers will take them as marching orders. And what is highly likely going into the 2024 election is that a small subset of Trump's very well-armed and extremist base will try to kill people. And you have to remember that Caesar Sayoc, this extremist in 2018 who sent pipe bombs to people that Trump targeted on Twitter, the only reason that people didn't die was because Caesar Sayoc was bad at building bombs. It wasn't because the rhetoric was unimportant. So mm. we're sort of gambling a lot of people's lives and our democracy on the idea that this rhetoric doesn't translate into real world violence. And that is a very, very bad bet for America to make. And Miles, um, more to the point about um, General Mark Milley, the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who Donald Trump said, um, basically said should have been put to death for, do, for doing his job in a way that um, the then president did not like. Well, at his retirement ceremony, General Milley apparently went off script and had this to say. But I'm taking oath to a king or a queen, or a tyrant, or a dictator, 
We don't take an oath to a wannabe dictator. We don't take an oath to an individual. We take an oath to the Constitution, and we take an oath to the idea that it's America, and we're willing to die to protect it. Miles, I mean, that, it, it, on the way out the door, you have a, a member of the military talking about the importance of their job and their oath to the Constitution and not one person. Well, you know, Jonathan, I'm going to tell you what's really remarkable about that is that Millie's remarks were not the first time this has been said. In fact, I was witness to one of Millie's peers saying that in front of Donald Trump himself. So back in 2017, when John Kelly, the first year of the Trump presidency, was named White House Chief of Staff, we were in the Oval Office and Kelly was getting sworn in. And he so feared Trump's impulses that instead of excitedly praising his new boss, Donald Trump, in the White House, he turned towards everyone assembled in the Oval Office and said, I want to make one thing clear before I swear this oath. I do not swear this oath to a man. We don't do that in this country. We don't swear an oath to a king. We swear an oath to the Constitution. And it was not lost on anyone in that room what John Kelly meant. And we've got Mark Milley here saying the same thing. What are they trying to tell us? They are trying to tell us that the man that they served is a wannabe despot. He is a wannabe king, and that's the concern we have. And Donald Trump has made it very, very clear while he's been out on the campaign trail that in a second term, he wants to weaponize the levers of government, he wants to light the Constitution on fire, and he'll continue to promote political violence and today. And one thing that I want to note, Jonathan, uh, to Brian's point, the numbers are off the charts. The risk of the assassination in this country is higher than it's ever been in the modern era. And we see that with threats to members of Congress, which have increased roughly tenfold since Donald Trump first became president of the United States, with threats to judges that have increased 400 percent in recent years, and threats to local officials, 81 percent of whom say in the past year they have felt threatened or harassed. So we are in a particularly dangerous moment for this country. And, and Molly, you wrote a column um, in Vanity Fair uh, picking up on a point that Brian mentioned, uh, I, I, I believe, in his answer at the beginning of this block, and that is, you know, the, we're, we're in danger of repeating a mistake in 2016, which is basically not taking the guy seriously. Uh, we didn't take him seriously in 2016, and I think in 2024, a lot of the American people, and maybe even some of our colleagues in the press are numb to it. Uh, talk about why that is uh, so dangerous. Real briefly, we'll take a break and then come back, but start. Uh, so I think it's an interesting phenomenon. Look, in 2015, Trump got $2 billion of free media. The media struck, uh, sort of swung at every pitch, right? We really saw that. Now we're in a situation where the media has gotten sort of exhausted by covering it, right? It's so how many times can you have some guy say, I'm going to burn the Constitution and, and you know, fire everyone who's like a, you know, a sort of normal nonpartisan working in the federal government? So I do think that there's been less coverage. And the problem is when there's less coverage, uh, you miss things like Trump threatening General Milley with execution, which is a really, really important data point and should not be lost. And again, last week we saw a number of things. And I think what's really striking to me is that there's so much coverage of Biden. Anytime Biden sort of makes a gaffe or, you know, trips, it's or even when he wore sneakers, there was a whole article about that. But last week, Trump confused Jeb Bush with H.W. Bush, and there was no coverage of that. So the man is not being covered much. And when he is, he's not really being covered for the right things. And I do think that's going to be a real problem. Mm -hmm.